Hello everyone, welcome once again to Plumbing's Cool. And this is how you flare a copper pipe. So before we get started, a few things we're gonna need are of course, uh, flared fitting. Now, flared fittings are a little different than other fittings uh, in plumbing or HVAC, which is where flared fittings are also commonly used. Flared fittings usually consist of a flared nut which must be purchased on its own, as well as the flared fitting itself. So there are particular things that make this flared fitting special, particularly the angle at which the pipe connects. What we're doing when we make a flared connection is that we're actually utilizing the pipe and bending it to the shape of the flared fitting itself. So this flared fitting is typically, typically tapers in at a 45 degree angle. And we're gonna do the same thing with our pipe. Now, a couple things to remember when before you initiate to make a, fl a flared fitting is a common mistake is that people forget to put the flare nut on ahead of time. Now, we have an open piece of pipe in this case because it's for demonstration purposes, but if this was a closed piece of pipe and we're just connecting via a flared fitting, well, if we put this either, either forget to put this on or even worse, put it on backwards, we're in trouble once our flared fitting is made because we can no longer take that nut off. So, rule number one, make sure you insert the flared nut onto the pipe and in the proper direction. Ultimately, what we're looking for is to sandwich our copper piping between the flare nut and the flare fitting. Right now, the copper nut goes onto the flared fitting properly, but there's nothing to hold it. So again, step one, place your flared fitting onto the pipe. Then we take our flaring tool, which consists of two components. One is the clamp, and the other one is the actual flaring tool itself. First thing you'll notice is that the clamp has a bunch of numbers on it. In this case, we're dealing with half-inch pipe. Now, plumbers in the plumbing trade, we refer to half-inch pipe based on its inside diameter. HVAC, or more specifically refrigeration tradespeople, uh, refer to copper pipe by its outside diameter. This is uh, referring to outside diameter piping. And again, because we have half inch piping, based on its inside diameter, our half inch piping is 5 eighths on the outside. So this is what we want for this particular application. So first step, when using the clamp, loosen both sides. This should open freely. Then we proceed to place the clamp. And this is very important because this can determine whether your flared fitting works or not. When you place a clamp onto the end of your pipe, you should have no greater than approximately one eighth of an inch passing the clamp. If it's any greater than one eighth of an inch, or if it's any less than one eighth of an inch, your flaring tool will not work. If it's any greater than one eighth of an inch, once you make your flare, this flaring nut won't be able to pass over. If you make it less than one eighth of an inch, then your flaring nut may just simply come off because you may not have made a rim wide enough. So here we go. So that's roughly about an eighth of an inch. And I'll begin to tighten the butterfly bolts on the side that I am placing my pipe. Okay, I can do this initial part by hand. It's rather easy because this other side isn't tightened yet. So we're gonna to proceed to tighten this snugly. And then once we have this side tightened snugly, we'll proceed to tighten the opposite side, like so. Now you're gonna to get to a point where it's gonna to be too much to tighten by hand, unless you're much stronger than I am, which could be the case. But hey, let's not try and shatter my ego here. So when you get to that point that it's too tight, take out your trusty pliers and proceed to tighten it. Until both sides of the clamp are fully touching. There. That's as good as that's as good as it's going to get. 
Okay, so now that we have this reinforced with the clamp, we can take our flaring tool and we will reverse it to the point where it's completely bottomed out on this end and proceed to slip it along the clamp and the cone of the flaring tool needs to sit directly into the center of the pipe that you clamped. And just to get it going, turn it. This is the easy part. And again, recall that we're using type L copper pipe, which is thicker than type M copper pipe, which is the minimum uh, thickness that we're allowed to use for pressure water piping. M water pipe is a little too thin walled uh, to be uh, to trust for, for flared fittings because what you're actually doing is stretching out the material. So you want something that has enough uh, material to be stretched out. Think balloon. A balloon, as you blow it up, becomes thinned out. And that's what we're doing here, we're thinning it out. So here we go. Now that this is perfectly centered, we can proceed to turn our flaring tool. Might need a little bit of muscle. And you're going to turn it and bottom it out to the point where this little diamond head cannot go any further. We still got some left and there we go. That is the maximum. So now I'm going to proceed to loosen it. Which is simply the reversal of how we put this all together. Loosen your clamp, starting with one end, and then the other. And once you have enough leeway to swing this out of the way, this should open up and you should be able to remove and observe your lovely new flared joint. Now if we did things right, this flaring nut should be able to slip on nicely. There you have it. This flared nut cannot go anywhere now, especially once we add the flared fitting. Once we add the flared fitting and we proceed to tighten the nut onto the fitting, that little copper end that we ended up flaring outward is getting sandwiched between the two sides now. And that's what actually acts as a seal. We don't need any Teflon tape. We don't need any dope or anything like that. All we need is some good hard elbow grease and some counterforce. So two pliers would suffice in this case, or actually two open end wrenches more specifically. Okay, pliers are actually not a good idea because you can scuff up the, uh, the, the, the straight edges. Okay, but for this demonstration, we'd be using one open end wrench and another open end wrench to close off. Once this is tightened, and actually you can even feel it without actually even applying much stress or tools to tighten it, this is already tight. It's not going anywhere. And there's our flare joint. And flare joints are great because uh, they can withstand significant, um, significant pressures refrigeration trays people use them for up to 300 psi of pressure within refrigeration systems and they're pretty reliable joints pretty reliable connections unlike compression connections that rely on a ferrule and uh, a nut uh, to connect to a um, uh, compression uh, fitting these are, are reliable and as a matter of fact are one of the few joints that can be buried uh, for usage of copper piping you can bury copper piping using brace connections, corporation connections, or flared connections. That's it. No other methods for burying copper piping, or copper piping joints specifically. There you have it. And so that's how you flare copper pipe. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please be sure to plunge that like button and subscribe to this channel. Please feel free to leave your comments in the section below. Any suggestions or ideas you may have, and I'll try and make it happen. Thanks for watching and take care.